Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. What are you, the three stooge Santas? <laughs> Okay, anyhow, yeah, yeah, yeah. we are here to, uh, this is part of our series of Christmas recommendations. These are stocking stuffers. You're looking for that small game to add to somebody to stick in a stocking or just a small game to give somebody. You know, you're yep. looking for something that's small and expensive. I think these are inexpensive um, games. This is something to give them. So these are small games, but we hope that they pack a punch. And hopefully whoever gave you this video once one of these 12 games. We'll find <laughs> out. Figure out which one. Yeah. All right, well, we'll start with Sam. Give us a good game. All right, my first good game for a stocking stuffer, and I made sure that all my games fit in stockings this year, baby. Yeah. Also, you can find most of these games at Cool Stuff, Inc., which is our sponsor. Link below. Yep, there you have it. Okay, well, on with the show. My first recommendation for the stocking stuffer is a game called No Thanks. A uh, game where comes with a deck of cards that have different numbers on them. I believe it's uh, 1 to 30-ish or something to that effect. And uh, you're trying to uh, not get points on this game. It's kind of the opposite of every other game that's out there almost. Uh, and you have, so, you have some chips in your hand. And when the card comes around, everybody has to basically either take the card and that becomes a point value or you place one of your chips on the card and you're basically saying, no, I don't want the card. And it keeps going around, keeps going around. Uh, yeah, and the same thing, and then when you take the card, whoever does take the card gets all the chips that are on the card and gets it in their hand. So now you have more stopping power or more refusal power for later on. Uh, it's a pretty cool game, and, and it's one of those games that kind of teaches itself as you play it. Uh, the, the rules are very simple, uh, so it's very easy to play, and uh, you get a lot of really fun play out of it. So that's no thanks. All right, my first choice is this tiny little game that is very attractive. And it comes in a little tin from Blue Orange Games. The game's called Brave Rats. And brave Rats is a game for... They're brave. Okay. They're brave rats. I think you're Scottish, it's too. It's a little... Yeah, they have a Scottish flair to them. By Dave Gill. It's a little card game for two players... That was French. ...that plays in about five, ten minutes. And this is a, a stocking stuffer and a, a little filler, also. You, you know, you can bust it right out teaching in a couple of minutes and playing about five. Each turn, each player has all their cards in their hand. You pick one, you put it face down, you flip them simultaneously and see which one wins. The highest number wins. That sounds really simple, and there's a couple of wrinkles in there. The cards, besides having a number, also have a special power. One of them, for example, I believe it's a three, something like that, says that the lowest number wins that round. And one says the next round, the opponent has to play face up first. Whoever wins three rounds or four rounds first wins the game. That's it. But again, it makes a really nice, it has a very nice presentation as a gift. It's very attractive. Like I said, it's a nice embossed tin. And it just would be a wonderful little stocking stuffer for maybe an older kid, um, someone who wants a little filler, that sort of thing. So I recommend Brave Rats. All right. My first is Council of Verona. This is Romeo and Juliet in card game form. Um, Except you are, you know, you're trying to pick the which of the two families you're trying to support the um, Capulets. Capulets and Mon Montagues. Montagues. Yes, yes. Uh, theater helps here. Um, <laughs> but in this game, you have different characters, and you're trying to put influence on the right characters, and maybe a couple characters don't make it to the end of the story, and of course, that's part of the, will Romeo and Juliet end up together, or will it be split? And you're trying to get different combinations so that you win. A very fun little light card game. Um, with I, I really like the artwork. It's very small, easy. I mean, there's, just, there's not many of that cards, just as a few cards and tokens, really play the game. There's also a little tiny expansion. I'd recommend getting the poison expansion mm -hmm. where you can, you know, poison a couple of these people. That even adds more to the fun. Anyway, that is called Council of Verona. Council of Verona. All right, my next uh, recommendation for Stocking Suffers is a game that got hit out of the park at Origins GameCon this year. And uh, it is a game called Star Realms. Star Realms is a is a two player little card game. They have variants where you can play four players, but I I never do. Uh, I just always play it two player. Um, and uh, basically, you take one. Um, y each player represents a faction that is warring with the other faction, and and you're trying to uh, basically decrease their 
productivity down to zero and it's basically you're trying to whittle their deck down or I'm sorry their points down to nothing and uh, they have an app on it now too as well for both uh, Android and uh, iPhone so you could check it out there and see if it's worth uh, buying the cards I guess because you can download uh, a free app I believe and then you can purchase add-ons later on uh, so you can try it out with the app first, and then, and then if you think you like it, or if you think you, the person you're wanting to buy it for it will like it, then uh, go ahead and order the game. It comes in a little, a little tuck box, uh, fits very nicely in a stocking. So that is Star Realms. All right. Um, me, yes? Yes, sir. Okay. My next choice is a game that actually, the last one I just spoke of, which is Brave Rats, this, this feels a bit like an evolution of that first game. This is a little game called Romans Go Home. Go home! Go home! And it is in a tiny little box. It is a card game as well. It is a game in which you are playing a clan and you are trying to um, win specific places, basically, and then push back. And um, you'll be playing cards, you know, um, uh, playing cards face down. They'll get revealed as you go. You see who won. You split up the winnings. Very simple little card game. But... There's a good amount of sort of bluffing and double think in this little tiny box. It's um, it's one I recommend and one that I think has flown under the radar. And so I want to highlight it. Look into it if you're looking for a little itty bitty card game that has some um, humor in it and a couple of interesting though very very light choices in it. Romans, go home. All right. Um, my next game actually comes in a, a pretty large box, but you can take everything out and put it in a bag, and that's Jungle Speed. Okay, good. That's Jungle good. Speed comes in a box, but you just you get rid of the box, and it all goes in a bag. Cheating! It's not a cheating. cheating. Not a cheating. I can take everything out. of His it. last choice is a massive stocking. No, this actually no, but this actually <laughs> comes with the bag in the box, and it does. the. It comes with a totem that's in the middle of the table, and each turn you flip over a card in front of you, and when two cards match, those players have to grab that totem. You gotta be careful not to play this game with people who have uh, Dracula-like fingernails, because they, w they could scar you for life, but it is highly entertaining. You grab it, or you know, sometimes you grab it and you're not supposed to, because your, your pictures didn't match, and there's all kinds of like weird different patterns, and some of them look a little similar. Yeah, they're And so purpose. occasionally you'll, you'll think it matches and it doesn't, and sometimes everybody's grabbing for it. Uh, very fun game. There's different variations of it that are out there, but they all play pretty much the same way. Grab the thing in the middle, jungle speed. Good, cool. All right, my next uh, installment for Stocking Stuffers, I believe this was on my Stocking Stuffers list last year. It was. And I'm keeping it there because it's a game that you should go out and get if you enjoy area control games. And a tight little uh, map, and it's really, really cool. And that is Condo Thierry. Uh, and uh, again, it's, it's simply what I just said. It is uh, your playing cards to... Um, uh, up the power of your your uh, your units on the board, and uh, it goes up to how many players? I messed this up I last year too. Six. Six yeah, is six. I was is surprised maximum. that it went up to six because I've only ever played it with four. Six seems like a lot of people. Four is pretty good because the map is really small. Uh, it comes in a little box. It's oblong. Uh, will fit nicely in a stocking. It will. Uh, so, uh, area control game, very quick, probably plays in about 45 minutes to an hour at most, I probably. would imagine. And uh, it's very, very cool. So if, if you're in, if you have somebody that likes the area control mechanic, this is probably a really cool stocking stuffer that they will very much appreciate. Yeah, and if you want a stocking stuffer that has a little bit more of a bite to it, this is one yeah. to, to go for. Yep. Uh, versus my choices, at least, which are very, very simple. Stick here. your hand in the stocking. <laughs> Get a crab as well. Um, my next choice is a very simple dice game put out by Fantasy Flight this year. The game is called Age of War, and it is um, a game in which you are attempting to control different castles in medieval Japan. You are basically playing a Yahtzee-style game, rolling dice, looking to get the combination that these castles require, and then grabbing that castle and putting it in front of you. The castle itself has a number of points printed on it, if you are able to collect all the red castles, let's say, then you can flip that whole stack over and get a bonus as well. But you can also go after someone else's castle, 
though there is a penalty. It, it you have to roll one extra die face specifically. That <laughs> doesn't soldier. stop me from trying. You have to uh, roll one more soldier to take them over, which makes sense. But you can go for that. Once all the castles are gone, you see how many points everyone has and see who wins. Very, very light dice game, but again, a great stocking stuffer and something you can teach to anybody, and I think they'll enjoy it. So, Age of War is my choice. All right, my next one is Ninja Dice. Ninja Dice comes in like a little uh, squishy bag, um, mm -hmm. and it comes with a bunch of ninja-style dice. And what you're doing on your turn in this game is you're trying to roll dice Yahtzee-style to accomplish a mission. You need to roll specific things to mm -hmm. beat that mission. But everyone else is not sitting there watching you do it. They're also rolling dice, trying to, when you, when you roll a dice, if your arrow is pointing at someone else, you can steal a coin from them. Mm -hmm. So there's you know different things, and if everyone else's dice show certain symbols, your time's up. You, you won't get anything. You can't complete the mission. So it, there's this kind of push your luck aspect to it. Very entertaining game. Very simple um, take on the Yahtzee genre. Uh, I like the packaging. I like the little ninja thing it comes in. That's a cute gift if you're going to give that to somebody. But it's also a fun game and easy to pass around and play. Yeah. So ninja dice. Cool. All right. Uh, my final uh, recommendation for stocking stuffers. I believe this was also on my list last year. I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure it was, and that is Fairy Tale. Uh, Fairy Tale is a quick little card drafting game where uh, you have a certain number of cards in front of you. You pick one of those and then move them to the uh, person to your right, and then the person to your. Uh, I'm sorry, I did, I did that wrong. Uh, person to your left, and the person to your right passes you their cards, and so forth and so on. That's how I remember. Call L is loser. no L is call left. That's how, I'm you not call calling you a loser. loser. Yeah, we're right back at you, buddy. <laughs> Uh, all right. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, it's a little cool, cool drafting game where you're trying to find combinations that go together. Uh, Skydance dragons will work with uh, dwarven warriors, I think, and and uh, these uh, fairies will work with these uh, minstrelists or whatever. Uh, and it's a really easy to teach drafting game uh, that came before Seven Wonders. <laughs> Um, you say this every time. Yes, I, know. I have to. I have to. Uh, but it's it's basically those of you who know Seven Wonders. Um, it's basically like Seven Wonders, but a little bit lighter. I think Seven Wonders is a little bit more of a thinky, mathy type of game. Not so much with Fairy Tale. So check it out. Fits very nicely in any stocking that's out there. Fairy Tale. All right. Well, my last choice is uh, a good one for the uh, trivial pursuit lover in your life. First of all, stop them. But um, <laughs> this is actually a very neat little trivia game which uh, comes in a box about that big, very tiny, and it's called Over Under. And that's written, if I'm not mistaken, over slash under. So Over Under is a game that comes with a bunch of cards which have questions on them, and all the answers are numbers. The way you play the game is very simple. You sit around a group, you'll pull a card, and you'll read the question out to everyone then everyone there can discuss what they think the answer is. You know, they can talk to each other freely and then figure out what it is. So, uh, in feed, how tall is the world's highest skyscraper? And let's say they tell you... 30. 30 feet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll say, um... We'll uh, say, uh, say, 900. 900 feet. 900 feet. Fine. The tallest skyscraper? Whatever. And so, over. once I've heard the answer, they have to come to an agreement, then I say it's over or it's under that number. I can also say if it's exact, that's used rarely. So let's say I say um, under. Then I'll flip the card, I'll look at the answer. If the answer is, in fact, under what the consensus said, I keep the card. That's a point. If I'm wrong, the deck of cards passes along and it is the next player's turn. You play until someone has five cards. It can be really whatever you want it to be. And that's the game. It's a trivia game, but you don't have to know the answer. You can just guess at the answer. You can be in the ballpark. It's like Wits and Wagers. It's a bit like Wits and Wagers, which is also a trivia game. This is, again, in a tiny little box, though, so it will fit in that stocking. And for someone who enjoys trivia, I highly recommend it. Very simple, cute little game, over under. All right, and the final game I'm talking about actually comes in, I believe, seven different versions, oh. and that's Timeline. They're all in the small little tin. Ah, yes. There's Timeline Americana, Timeline American History, Pop Culture, World History. Music. Music, and Inventions. Inventions. And each one 
has a bunch of different things like inventions, has when different things were invented throughout history. So you have four of these in front of you, and on your turn you stick it into a timeline and then flip it over to see if you were correct. So like Z might put out the invention of the sewing machine and I'll say, okay, I have the invention of the radio. Did that come before or after sewing machine? So I'll say after, I flip it over, I'm correct, the date show you. If you're incorrect, you discard the card, you get another card. You're trying to get rid of all the cards in front of you. Mm -hmm. I found that this is also very fun to mix them together. This right. is what I would do if I had like three kids. I'd give each one a different one and then say, this is yours, this is yours, this is yours. But they really should be mixed together. Now it's just play. <laughs> yes, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, but the, it's really fun. I, 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 it, it, and it's also very educational. I mean, right. it does teach you when different things happen. And you, you'll be surprised sometimes. The replayability value is basically how bad you are at memory. Mm -hmm. um, but the more sets you mix together, the, the more replayability it, it has. Yeah. So that's timeline. And that's it, folks. That's our top 12 stocking stuffers. Hopefully this list, if you like this list, we have uh, four other lists out there with different uh, Christmas gift guides for you for games. So check them out. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Thank you. And I'm Sam Healy. You're welcome. Merry Christmas.